be shy Cause I Life won't bring you down too far This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by, once again, a very fresh and young-looking Mr. Bob Arum. Yep. How are we, Bob? California weather, so that's terrific. Nothing could be better. Do you actually sunbathe, Bob? Do you sit in the garden and and sunbathe? I I read. I read outside, so uh, that's why I'm looking almost as dark as you are. Nearly, not quite, but nearly, nearly. Yeah. I was blessed with the colour. Um, yeah. Bob, yeah, let's just start with uh, the show that's on um, ESPN, also on BT Sport here in the UK uh, this Saturday, the 15th of August, featuring Carl Frampton and Michael Conlon. Uh, it's great to see them on the, on the same card, first of all. Yeah, I mean, this is great. I mean... Uh, the big favorites in the United States, uh, ESPN, uh, was wanting us, obviously, to feature them uh, this summer on our uh, uh, telecast. Uh, and uh, now that we're doing it uh, on Saturday from the UK, uh, to see both boys on the card is a real treat for the American fan. So let's just talk about Cole Frampton first of all. He's had uh, a change of opponent. He he now faces Darren Trainer, but that's been a little bit of a nightmare situation over the last couple of weeks for Cole, and I'm assuming for yourselves to get an opponent in time. Listen, maybe a few months ago it'd be a nightmare. Right now it's business as usual because you know what happened. When we did 13 shows in seven weeks, 13 events for ESPN, I think uh, on a majority of those events, either the main event or the co-main event fell out on us, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. But again, these are not ordinary times. So I'm thankful that we got the card together and that uh, Frank will be able to uh, 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 show it in the the UK and we'll have it uh, for Saturday afternoon uh, in the United States. And uh, Michael Conlon, uh, also in action this week. Uh, I mean, everyone's careers have been slowed down to a certain degree, but Michael Conlon was off the back of, obviously, the Nikitin win in December. He was meant to fight on a show St. Patrick's weekend. That was called off at the last minute, but it was important just to get him out again. A hundred percent because you know, we promised uh, Michael that we'd get him a title shot this year, 2020. Well, because of the coronavirus, that'll make it half of next year. So hopefully by uh, June 30th of 2021, Michael will be fighting for a title. So it's great to get him going again. I mean, he was supposed to fight St. Patty's Day uh, in New York and uh, through no fault of his own, uh, we had to cancel that show because of the coronavirus. And Carl Frampton um, comes through, obviously, his fight on Saturday. Will his next fight be against Gerald Hemming? Herring, sorry. Uh, if, if uh, you know, Herring is fighting, I think, September 5, I said. Yeah, yeah September 5 in the bubble. And if uh, Carl and uh, Herring uh, both survive, uh, we'll do uh, their fight later this year. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, also, the um, MTK have a show on. Wednesday night here in the UK, their first one back. Again, that's live on IFL TV here in the UK, but also on ESPN Plus uh, over in the States. That's correct. That's correct. Obviously, live sports are uh, a rare commodity now, although it's getting better because baseball is being played. 
and basketball in the bubble, but still there's a, a shortage of, of live sports. And so uh, uh, ESPN Plus, uh, which is our, uh, uh, sat- our uh, digital outlet, which now I'm pleased to say has over 10 million subscribers, uh, they are looking for a lot more boxing content. We look forward to it. Um, like I said, two shows this week to look forward to. We've just spoken about. Um, Bob, any latest on Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder you can tell us about? Well, we're back in the situation uh, where we were very confident uh, that on December 19th, we would have the availability of this brilliant, beautiful new stadium in Las Vegas uh, where the uh, football team play, American football team, the uh, uh, Las Vegas Raiders play. uh, And it would be the first non-football event uh, in uh, uh, that stadium. Uh, But now we're not sure whether uh, they'll, they'll allow us even limited number of spectators. So we're working on it. We're speaking to the right people, the right authorities here in Nevada, uh, certainly all the team officials uh, uh, at the stadium. Uh, and right now we're uh, set on December 19th. Now, whether that truly is able to happen or not, uh, you know, that remains to be seen. I mean, we are very powerful people here in the United States, uh, uh, but, you know, we have never gone up against this coronavirus. <laughs> you know, then, so you, you understand. Uh, we were hoping, for example, Lomachenko Lopez. Uh, I put it into October because I thought in my mind, that surely by October, they would allow us to do uh, an event for spectators with limited number of spectators. Uh, And that isn't going to be the case. Uh, So now we're talking about that fight uh, going into the bubble and doing it without spectators. I mean, what else are you going to do? You do the best you can to get the best possible uh, financial results by showing it to fans. Uh, But again, that doesn't appear likely. And rather than abandon that fight uh, because of that, uh, we're going to find a way uh, to get it done. Just coming back to uh, Fury and Wilder, Bob, if it doesn't take place for for the reasons you mentioned on December 19th, what is option B for this to take place? I'm assuming it will creep into 2021. It will creep into 2021. It will be in the first, we have a a really good opportunity to do it in Asia uh, in the beginning of February. Okay, so that, that is the second option at the moment. That is the second option at the moment. Now, if that is not going to be the case as well, then we all have to sit down and figure it out. But I don't want, uh, I, you know, I don't want to abandon that fight uh, until uh, the last minute. And I'm optimistic, that somewhat optimistic for December 19th and even more optimistic that if that doesn't work out, February 1st or 2nd. Just coming back to Lomachenko and, and, and Lopez, Bob, there was obviously a lot of reports about Lopez uh, not agreeing to the financial terms at the start. Can you kind of just clarify that? And then that's obviously all been sorted out now. Well, it's going to be sorted out, yeah, because obviously if two revenue streams – uh, like uh, the gate and the uh, uh, the closed circuit, you mean bars and so forth, are not there. That takes away a tremendous amount 
Uh, now we have to just uh, use the television money uh, to pay the fighters. And we explain what's available and uh, uh, what ESPN is prepared to pay. Uh, and uh, uh, the fighters, obviously, nobody is taking less than the contract. You understand that? In other words, I don't, we have certain minimums in the contract. I have never, ever in this whole coronavirus situation asked the fighter to take less than his minimum. But in many cases in the past, fighters were getting two or three times their minimum, sometimes even more. And that's when we had all these revenue streams. Now we don't. So with the idea you don't cut the fighter below his minimum, and then the question is how much above the minimum we're able to go to make that fight happen. So fighters talking about, I'm not going to take a cut, I'm not going to take a cut. Nobody's asking anybody to take a cut. But if you were making $2 million, when your contract provides for a minimum of a million dollars, now with what's going on, you can't be, we can't, you can't expect to get the $2 million, you'd have to get somewhere between a million and two million for your next fight. But nobody is cutting anybody, at least as far as we're concerned. And I think the same thing for Heyman and PBC. But the fight is, we're used to getting so much extra money when the money was flowing from the gates and so forth, that that's no longer the case. It's a, it's a situation that's obviously, I mean, it's changing day by day is this as well. I mean, we never thought we'd be in this, but it's a, it's a changing situation, isn't it, Bob? Well, it's a changing situation for the whole world. And boxing is just a little small part of that world. So obviously when it affects the world, it's going to have a collateral effect on boxing, which is part of the world. Absolutely. Um, Bob, what, what's the latest with Terence Crawford? Terence Crawford, we're, we, we're, we're trying to put together a fight with Manny Pacquiao, which would be out of the United States. Now, if we're able to do that, that's uh, that's the fight I hope to put together. But if uh, that is not, a, a, we're not able to do it because of the virus, which affects them no matter how much oil they have. Uh, the If we're not able to do that fight, uh, we have to do it in the bubble. Uh, we are looking at uh, having Terrence as a possibility fight Kelbro. So have talks been on the way for that, for, for a possibility of Brooke and, and uh, Crawford? Well, I talked to the Brooke people today. They know what the situation is, and they'll be back to us. But Brooke, they assure me, and you can help me there, they assure me that Brooke has lost a lot of weight and is in getting into tremendous condition. I have seen some uh, video footage and images of Kel Brook. He's definitely in training, so I'd roll with that, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where is the likely destination of a potential Crawford Pacquiao fight, Bob? Where would, if that is to happen? I can't tell you. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you, that. you know, because we're working on it. I don't know whether it's going to come to fruition or not come to fruition. You know, it's such conjecture at this point. You know, it's, again, you know, I don't even have a concrete offer. So, you know, it's silly to talk about it, except the fighters would both want it, both yeah. Crawford and uh, Pacquiao. But again, nothing at all concrete. Now, to do a Crawford-Brook fight, is a lot easier because 
then it would be a fight that would have to be in the bubble yeah. uh, here uh, in Las Vegas. Okay, Bob, um, is there any updates on uh, Gerald Miller? No, I, you know, we had a contract with Miller and, uh, you know, what happened was very disappointing for us, uh, uh, a positive PED test. Uh, but I don't want to say anything further about that because he's going before the commission yeah. and he doesn't need any statement from me that might, uh, uh, prejudice uh, his position before the commission. So that wouldn't be fair to him. So I'm not going to say anything. I have very definite feelings about it, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want him to uh, take any of the consequences, bad consequences for what I might say. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, so, Bob, some well, say this isn't really news, but it kind of is news. The fact that uh, last week that Mr. Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren have finally spoken on the phone for the first time, which I'm sure you would have heard about at some point. What was your initial reaction to that? You know, I talked in the, I used to talk on the phone with Don King when we were really battling together on a regular basis. I mean, there's nothing inherently there uh, talking on the phone. I mean, I, I talked on the phone uh, on Saturday to Eddie. I talked on the phone this morning to Eddie. That doesn't mean that anything is imminent, but it's always good to talk because if you're talking, uh, then something can come of it. I mean, we can help Eddie maybe. In something that he's doing, he can help us. So, uh, you know, talking is always good. I mean, the idea that two guys in the same business won't talk to each other is ludicrous. Um, what do you? What did you think about Frank's kind of? It was more like a, a media proposal, if you like, about certain fighters from Queensbury fighting certain fighters from Matchroom and suggesting how these fights can be made at, at some point in order for them to work together. The idea is, is a good idea, should we say, on paper. How realistic it is, we don't know. Well, it, it, you can't really do it on a, as I've learned, on a overall basis. You can do it on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. For example, we have no problem with Golden Boy. Uh, having them use our fighters, we use their fighters, and it works out really well. But without a lot of sturm and drang, uh, a lot of uh, anxiety, it's just a normal course. Our matchmakers might call up uh, Robert Diaz and Eric Gomez at Golden Boy, or arranged for a fight, they may call us up. That's the way fight it. promoters have always operated. Uh, to a lesser extent, we're doing that with Heyman and the PBC, with, with PBC and Tom Brown, who's part of uh, PBC. Uh, so uh, for Eddie and Frank not to do that, again, fight by fight, not overall, makes no sense. They're a small country, the UK. Uh, they each have some good fighters in the same weight classes. Why wouldn't they match them from time to time? Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. Of course, we had the same problem here for many years with uh, uh, PBC and Top Rank and, from, and with uh, Eddie and the Zone, not... Uh, uh, you know, crossing over. But we've always been, you know, Eddie will tell you, uh, when uh, he offered uh, Ramirez, Jose Ramirez, a fight with Hooker and came to us, uh, we were uh, more than happy to do it. 
particularly the money that he was paying at that point. Uh, so, you know, we were, we were always amenable to doing that. Now, that being said, there'll be a couple of fighters that we have that uh, uh, ESPN uh, feels they have an investment in, like uh, a Crawford, like Lomachenko, uh, like um, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, that uh, ESPN would not want us uh, to deliver to another network and exclude them. But that's only a few of our fighters, and I assume Eddie has the same problem with a few of his fighters in the zone and sky. But again, there's so many fighters that the network really doesn't care if the fighter fights on another network, that a lot of good fights can be put together. Mm. Absolutely. We'll have to see how that situation pans out. Hopefully it does uh, have some positive effect and uh, they do start working together more. Bob, just finally, what are your thoughts on this proposed exhibition between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones? I think they've, they've pushed it back now. To November, yeah. I read that today, yeah. Yeah, well, if it's an exhibition where they fool around a little and they show the, you know, relatively aged for fighters. I can't talk about age, really. I'm not in a position to discuss that. But uh, two aged fighters, that as long as they're going to go in with heavy gloves and uh, uh, fool around, so to speak, I think that's fine. That's they, they're icons in the sport. But if they're going to go out and uh, start really fighting for real, I think that's terrible because one or the other of them can be really hurt at this age. Uh, participating in a boxing match uh, can be very dangerous because doctors will tell you uh, the neurological doctors that we have available to us uh, at the Cleveland Clinic uh, say that as a, as a human being ages, the cranial uh, protection uh, gets weaker and weaker. It's not as strong uh, as it was in a young person who then uh, is getting older. So a fighter fighting seriously into his 50s is into a very high degree of risk. Just like if a, somebody gets mugged and it's a young person that gets mugged and hits on the head, his chances of recovery are a lot better than an older man who gets hit on the head. Well, that's definitely uh, a good explanation of putting it. Of, uh, I suppose... I don't know how much of this stuff is actually being looked into, but we're, we're taking it as an exhibition. So we're not looking yeah, well, at it as... As long as, the, as long as everybody understands that it's an exhibition, including Roy and Mike, good. God love it. Why not? If charity can make money, if they can make money, I'm all for it. As long as nobody gets hurt and nobody is fooled. In other words, all this... Stuff, like once they announced this, they announced it was an exhibition and that it was for charity and big love. And then Roy forgets himself and said, I'm going to go out and try to knock him out. You know what I mean? And the commission heard that and they went crazy. Mm. Yeah, as long as everyone kind of knows what the score is, then yeah. Yeah. Um, just one more quick update, if you can, Bob. Uh, AJ Pulev, what's, what's the latest with this? I talked to Eddie. Club? I talked to Eddie. And uh, uh, he's going to look to put it on, hopefully in December, with limited spectators. And I told him, you know, good news. Uh, we can get a very nice price in the afternoon, <clears throat> Saturday afternoon, uh, from ESPN. Because uh, uh, it looks now like the college football season, which, as you know, is huge yeah. in the United States, will not take place. 
Right, okay. So, so that will help with the finances because obviously the gate will not be the same as it would have been under normal circumstances. Hopefully the pay-per-view in England will not be affected uh, because it will you know, be regular English time. And then if we can get a good amount from ESPN, then uh, the chances of the fight happening uh, are increased. So how does that affect uh, the zone then? It be with ESPN then, Bob? Well, we'd have to, again, we'd have to work out a situation where the foreign rights would be divided between, would go to the Eddie and would go to the zone. They would buy whatever foreign rights they wanted. And the U.S. territory, U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico territory, that would be ESPN. ESPN, I think India also, but that's nothing. But, but the ESPN territory is not as extensive as the zone. So there's a, a, a way to compromise where ESPN is limited to, as I said, U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. And the zone gets the right, buys the rights for the rest of the world. Okay, that's interesting. Um, okay, Bob, I uh, appreciate your time um, this Monday afternoon for you, Monday night for me. And uh, we we'll look forward to... There's yeah, a lot of boxing this been, week. We have, a, you know, in August the 22nd, we got a great light heavyweight day. Yeah. With Alvarez against Joe Smith, elimination map. And then... Uh, uh, you know, really good, good fights uh, because now it's it, it's somewhat easier because there's more people back in the gym and doing it once a week rather than twice a week is far less burdensome for us. Pl- plenty of uh, boxing for everyone to uh, yeah. get back to, so it's great. Yeah, that's true. And... Uh, ESPN has been very was very satisfied with the summer series, thirteen events that we did, and now we because we're going once a week, we're going to step up the quality, and more of the champions are getting back in action uh, on the 29th uh, of August. Pr- pretty good uh, junior welterweight championship match with Jose Ramirez. Uh, against uh, Postel and uh, late, uh, and, uh, and the fi- following month uh, from the UK uh, we're going to be doing uh, Taylor and the uh, Thai number one guy uh, and if both Taylor and uh, Ramirez win uh, we're going to have uh, hopefully a December surprise where the two guys can fight uh, for the four, all four. Wow. Uh, wow. Titles. wow. Yeah. That's what we want to see. We want to see that fight between two. Yeah, that'd be a great fight. Definitely. That'd be a great fight. And, you know, we're going to do the fight wherever it makes most financial, you know, uh, 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 sense. Uh, we're going to do it either in the UK. For example, if you got the UK, the UK was up and running and could do a fight with spectators. And in the US, we couldn't do it yet. We would go, uh, Ramirez has no problem whatsoever uh, in going to the UK. Okay, that's quite a lot of information you've uh, given us here tonight, Bob. So, much appreciated. Okay, well, we're, we're pumped up now because we're getting, getting, now that the college football thing is being fleshed out, uh, it gives uh, sport of boxing a lot more opportunities, uh, whether it's top rank or BBC, uh, to do 
a lot more interesting fights. Okay. Bob Aram, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV today. Um, much appreciated, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon. Yeah, you sure will. Good talking to you. You too, mate. Thank you very much. I know it.